right here today. The God who comes to save us. The God who comes to set us free. The God who cannot contain his love and who wants everyone to know. The God who is on a mission. Cut. <laughs> Good morning, and no, we are not starting our worship service now every Sunday like that. Um, and some of you might find, oh, that's too bad, actually. <laughs> so welcome to Peace Lutheran. I'm glad you're here this morning. Um, but just like the Blues Brothers, and now I kind of like... <sighs> revealed one of my hidden favorite movies. <laughs> and I usually never, never tell anyone how much I really like it. Um, just like the Blues Brothers, we are on a mission from God. We, and I cannot say it like they do, like are we on a mission from God? <laughs> Something like that. Today is our Visioning Sunday, um, and in the worship service, in the sermon, and in the presentation after, we'll uh, present the results of the visioning process that we started in the fall and then that was interrupted um, through some white stuff on the ground. So, and I don't think it's going to be as exciting as the beginning of our worship service. Um, and a um, little change in the program, uh, because I need to change now, we're going to have the announcements first. <laughs> Hello? Unfair. That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> I'm just going to call your attention to the announcements that are in the, the last few pages of our bulletin. Uh, as Pastor said, the visioning process is happening after worship in the Fellowship Center. Please go. Um, there's a free webinar that's being offered to, our, to us. Uh, three ways a small church can be an effective church, and that it's got to be a lot of value to us because we are a small <coughs> church and we want to be effective. Um, the email is in the bulletin for you to get the link to that um, to that webinar. Uh, you've seen maybe you've seen the diaper drive table out in the atrium. PLCW has moved the diaper drive to May in honor of Mother's Day and away from the crazy busy holiday time. Um, please donate diapers, or if you'd like to write a check to PLCW, we will buy the diapers for you. Um, what else? Mission Endowment Sunday is two weeks from today. Um, I recently learned that there have yet been no donations to, to the Mission Endowment Fund this year. Um, check for the blue envelope that's in your box, in your um, envelope box, and make a donation to this very worthy cause. Um, Finally, um, June 4th will be our third annual Arts at Peace. It's going to be a mu music and art festival. It's a fun afternoon of art, music, and fellowship. If you know an artist who would be interested in displaying their works, they can contact Connie Berg, and her information is in the bulletin. Connie Berg, thank you. I wanted to tell you that this week, we sent a check to Lutheran World Relief from the proceeds of the concert that Walt organized a few weeks ago. And I don't remember the exact number, it's $5,130.40 or $5,140.30. <laughs> it's a little over $5,100, so thank you all for your generosity. We gathered here this morning in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another and begin with a moment of quiet reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are added to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us.
you are on the mission. You are on the mission since the beginning of the universe. The mission to create and to, to create relationship. To create relationship to you and relationship among the people. Relationship among everything that you have created. And you still are on that same mission to come, to bring us to you, to bring people together. And so God, today we come and ask that you take us as we are, that you rekindle um, our passion for mission again and that you use us as we are gathered here as individuals, as congregation, to be part of your mission, to reach out to the world, so that everyone may know how much you love them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. from Isaiah 55. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me, Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Rejects you, rejects me, 
and whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. Have you ever been to an Oriental Bazaar? I know, I know some, some people have been in Jerusalem and, and, and in Egypt or other places. So uh, we, we were lucky enough to um, walk the bazaars, uh, the streets um, in Istanbul and Jerusalem. It's full of smell. And, I mean, good. Like there's um, all, all these um, um, spices and teas and food that's smelling from every side. Um, lots of colors, vibrant. Vendors offering food, calling out, selling clothes, carpets, especially carpets. There's everything you could need, like little teapots, big pots to, boil, to cook, whatever you need is there. And voices try to catch your attention and to try to draw out the other voices who also call out for you to come and buy whatever they have to sell. And sometimes I do believe our world is just like that, like a bazaar. Um, with all these noises and the chaos and the craziness, um, advertising, trying to catch your attention. Um, well, you all know um, Times Square in New York, right? Um, we, our church was close to Dundas Square in Toronto, not quite as famous, but similar concept, like all these contentious billboards or everywhere, um, and the advertising coming to you, not, not sound, but pictures from every side. You didn't really know where to look first. Competing voices trying to convince you that you should buy this or that product, that you deserve more, if you have the money to pay for it, that is. That this or that destination needs to be on your bucket list. That buying this product will make you happy. Well, until it doesn't anymore and you need something else to make you happy, right? And in this loud, chaotic, bizarre of our world, a voice is calling out. A voice that is almost desperate. A voice offering happiness. Abundant life, overflowing life. A voice that's calling, come and eat, come and drink, come and buy without money. You don't even have to pay for it. Why are you paying for things that don't make you happy and you run after it and your life dependent on it? Why don't you come to me and get what really satisfies you? I offer it all for free. Life that lasts, hope that doesn't disappoint, love that doesn't get old, fulfillment and fun without the hangover and regrets. It's God's voice that is calling. And this voice has not changed since the beginning of history. It is the voice of a God who is longing for us who is craving our relationship, who is aching, hurting, because we, the people created to be with them, are not listening and rather look for purpose and satisfaction elsewhere. It's the voice of God who wants us to be happy, who wants us to be whole, and who didn't doing everything to get our attention so that we know His love. This is why we're here, isn't it? We heard, we, because we are hungry and we need to be fed. I do. We are thirsty and need to be refreshed. We come and we are empty and we need our cup to be filled. We are here because in this crazy, loud, Bizarre of this world, at some point we heard the voice of God calling, offering us food for our souls 
and water to refresh us. I guess you figured by now that I really, really love Isaiah's description of God as a vendor in a busy marketplace, offering us not some replacement, but giving us what we really need. Peace that's inside and out. Being accepted as who we are and accepting ourselves for who we are. Forgiveness for our mistakes and compassion. And it's all for free. Okay, it's not entirely true. It's not completely free. It costs God and Jesus a lot. But for us it's free. It's truly free. It's not one of these advertisements you get. Free, and then find it if you purchase 25 of these before. God's mission hasn't changed. It was the same at the beginning of the world when he created humankind. It was the same when Isaiah uh, portrayed God as a vendor. It was the same when Jesus sent his 70 disciples. 70, not just 12 apostles. 70 was a higher level to proclaim that the kingdom of God is near, that God is near. Near as in close by, like this close, not as in will be coming in the future. I think we made this mistake for the longest time that we always thought when Jesus is talking about oh, God is near, that he would talk about the end of days, right? Um, so it will, it will still come, but Jesus is talking about it close. It's in our time, whatever the time is, and it's in space close, like next door, or even closer, right? Just around that corner. <coughs> you see it? That close. We can notice it breaking into our world. And it happens when people are filled with peace. Or when people reconcile after they were fighting. Or when people give up their grudges and forgive others. When healing happens. When broken relationships are healed. When our emotions and disappointments find healing in God. And yes, sometimes even at the healing of bodies as well. We can see that God is near, that God is breaking in to our world. It came through many things. It came through the 70 Jesus sent. And today, it's coming through us who are sent into the world to proclaim and to live that the kingdom of God is near, that God is near. Folks, this is us. God's plan, we are God's plan to do this job. We are among the 70, uh, God right, um, we are among those 70 sent out into the world to proclaim that God comes. It is us, through us, that God comes into this world. Through our words and through our action. And yes, God has other ways and other people and other ways to do that. And still we are sent. There is no plan B. We are it. We are God's plan. And if we are not doing it, no one is doing it. Period. There is no plan B. Us incomplete, baffled, doubting, and insecure disciples, not knowing what to say, more stuttering than proclaiming something loudly and with confidence. But we are it. We are on a mission from God. We are God's plan to let all the others know how much God is longing for them. How wonderful they are made, and that there's a place for them at the table. We have received so much, so many blessings, so many gifts from God. Our cup is running over. We have what the world needs. And I know that sounds really 
nose up and cocky and haughty and like, haha, oh, we, we have it, right? It's not meant like this. We don't have it as a, oh, here, right? We're always also having to find and receive it again from God. But what else is there more that this world needs than all these spiritual gifts that God wants to give to all people? We are not coming with demands and rules and laws and not with judgment. And it's unfortunate that some Christians are doing just that. You know, I usually don't like to talk about other Christians, but like this loud message of judgment and condemnation is not God's message. Read the Gospel. Our message is one of peace. And it doesn't change a bit even if people don't want it, don't want to receive it, and don't accept it. That's fine. God loves you even if you don't love God. God has forgiven us in Christ. The difference is that if we know, it will set us free. It will take that burden of, of guilt, of whatever it is, from our shoulders. If we don't, well, we still can <coughs> Even if we don't accept it, it is there for us. We are sent to share some real good news and it really should make us bold, confident. Straight up, I don't know how else to express it, to say, hey, we're not coming as with some really weird message. We're not coming on, oh, hey, people, we need someone to pay our mortgage. You want to join our church? <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be a great motivation. Right? Or we need fresh blood. Vampires looking for fresh blood. It's called vampire evangelism. None of it. None of it. Our mission is to let people know how much they are loved from God. Um, and that's basically it. It hasn't changed, right? I mean, it's, um, every mission statement of every church has that in there, in one way or another. So do we. Just have to remember that. That we want people to know the love of God in Jesus Christ. That's it. We are on a mission from God. Let's go. Amen.
the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of life, strengthen your church to proclaim your gospel, even in times of trouble. We remember the mission of Stephen, and we give thanks for diaconal ministers. Bless and strengthen them for their bridge-building ministry between the church and the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, you show us your steadfast love through the mighty waters of the South Yuba, the towering mountains of the Sierra Nevada, the verdant fields of the Central Valley, and the arid plains of the Mojave Desert. Protect the Earth's diverse habitats from the forces of pollution, erosion, extinction, and climate change. Restore areas destroyed by conflict or national, natural disaster. Lead local officials to a solution for the resurgence of Tulare Lake. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of healing and transformation, with broken hearts, we pray for the victims and families affected by recent mass murders in Davis, now in Allen, Texas, and in Chico. We're thankful for the bravery of police officers who run into, into danger to protect others. Disrupt the activities of violent individuals who choose the way of hatred over the way of love. Empower local leaders and organizations to lead their communities toward peace and safety. And guide us to bravely address the societal issues of mental illness and poverty that can turn to violence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of peace, empower world leaders and organizations to lead their nations toward righteousness and peace. Disrupt the work of warmongers, terrorists, religious and political extremists, and all who would choose hatred over love. We pray again for the people of Serbia, Sudan, and Ukraine. Hear us, O oh God. God of compassion, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war and poverty, and all question if there is a home in your heart. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, you are our never failing voice of comfort through all the trials of life. Give strength and perseverance to those in the struggles of anxiety, grief, illness, or recuperation. We pray especially for Anne, Jamie, Marianne, Marilyn, Liz, Robbie, Myrna, Dan, and all those we name now aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of steadfast love, you accompany your people amid uncertainty and change. 
uphold people in this community who have recently moved, changed jobs or schools, retired, or are going through transitions of any kind. Hear us, O oh God. God of resurrection, you gather the saints at your heavenly banquet. We give you thanks for the care shown to us by those who have gone before. Grant confidence and comfort for all awaiting the place you have prepared. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. We will now receive the offering.
God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth fruit from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be here with you. of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as we continue on our mission that we are on from God, let us unite with God's will and Christ's will as we pray the prayer he taught us. <clears throat> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Please have a seat. Everyone is welcome at Christ's table. His arms are wide open um, to nourish all of us um, physically, but even more so spiritually. So please wait until the ashes call you forward and come to the altar. The way we um, do communion now is that 
you come forward and you stand or kneel and receive bread and wine or juice. And there's also a gluten-free option.